This is a luxury hotel on the island of Hawaii called the White Lotus Resort. It's a beautiful, classy, charming place that offers a week in paradise for the rich. But in just one week, the class gap between the rich and the poor is brought to the forefront. A resort that mirrors the ugliness and darkness of human nature, and even a murder in the end. On the Golden Shore, the hotel manager and his staff greet the passengers arriving by boat with smiles on their faces. The first group to arrive is a newlywed couple, Shane and his wife Rachel, on their honeymoon. Rachel, who comes from an ordinary background, married Shane, whose family is in the real estate business and is considered to have married into a rich family. Seeing the two of them in love on the ship, a pair of gossip-loving girls made a guess about them. My birthday met on Raya. Totally. She's in fashion. Marketing. She loves him, but he's got a small tag. The besties are from the second group of travelers, Olivia and Paula, both sophomores. It's summer vacation, so Paula is on vacation with Olivia's parents and brother. The last traveler to disembark is the lonely Tanya, who's not very excited about her trip and is trying to heal her heartache. This season's episode of the White Lotus centers on the hotel manager and staff, as well as a few wealthy travelers. The newlyweds have just checked into their room and are about to do the sweetest things on their honeymoon. But then Shane pops out of bed and realizes there's something wrong with the hotel room. They're not in the honeymoon suite they ordered, but Rachel thought it was a nice room with a panoramic view of the sea. This is like the swankiest hotel room I've ever stayed in. Well, yeah, but you haven't traveled that much, so... Even though Rachel was embarrassed by his disapproval, she chose to calm her husband down so as not to ruin the honeymoon. She then accompanied her husband to the hotel manager and told him that his mom had booked them a suite with a pool, and apparently the hotel had made a mistake. But after checking the records, the manager said that they did not get the wrong room, and the manager specifically emphasized that Shane is now staying in the best suite in the whole hotel, which made Shane temporarily put off the idea of changing rooms. After the couple left, the manager immediately began to teach the staff about the case. That is, no matter what time to let the guests feel that they received the best service, but it was the manager's mistake that caused the guests to double book the honeymoon suite. And they didn't realize that this time, the guest he met was not an easy one to solve. The woman took off her shirt to reveal her sexy body and walked slowly into the pool. The two girls on the shore were mesmerized by this scene and looked at her for a while. Just now Rachel came to the pool alone and met the two girls who had arrived at the resort on the same boat as them today. But she didn't know that the two girls already had teeny glasses on her. Bored, Rachel chose to strike up a conversation. But the girls wanted to find out if Rachel was the gold digger they suspected. Where'd you meet him? Through friends. Not Raya. Raya? No, <laughs> not Ryan. What do you do? I'm a, I'm a journalist. Oh. Apparently, Rachel's reality is very different from what they thought she was based on her appearance. After asking several questions, they confirmed that Rachel was indeed married to a rich man. Yeah, he's super hot, congrats. Do you two go to school together? The two of them don't really want to answer Rachel's questions. Rachel realizes that this conversation can go on any longer. She took off her coat and let the girls admire her gorgeous body. Back in the room, Rachel tells her husband about the two rude girls she met. Turns out Shane is obsessing about the room again. He's already confirmed with his mom that they booked a honeymoon suite with a pool, and the hotel manager lied to him about it. Rachel is clearly not happy about this. She seriously tells Shane that if he continues to obsess about it, their honeymoon will be ruined. Shane realizes that his wife is upset and stops for a while. After enjoying a romantic dinner with an ocean view, the newlyweds finally had a perfect first night of their honeymoon. But the next morning they had a new problem. Rachel received a job message asking her to write a report as soon as possible. Shane is dismissive of the request and asks her how much she'll be paid. A few hundred dollars. No way. Oh no. But Rachel is a freelance writer and if she keeps turning down assignments, there's a good chance she won't be asked to write again. Yeah, but what, you're on your honeymoon, you're gonna hole up in the hotel room, just write some disposable garbage? It's not garbage. Yeah, fine. Shane thinks Rachel's work is pointless, and since she's married to him now, she doesn't need to work for money. As a husband, he can offer his wife a good life. You're my wife, come on. Welcome to the rest of your wonderful life. Before Rachel can respond to that, Shane catches up with a passing hotel manager and shows him the order, information that his mom passed on to him and continues to argue with him about the room. The manager had no choice but to apologize to Shane and admit that he did have the wrong room. But the couple in the honeymoon suite left the same day they did, so he couldn't kick them out. Since I can't get you the other room, um, I'm hopeful there's some other way we can make this up to you. Let me think on it. 
Shane didn't appear to be bothered, but he soon found the couple in the honeymoon suite. He found out that the manager had lied to him again, because the couple was leaving in two days. Shane thinks the manager must be trying to make things difficult for him. I call my mom, see if they were fun of the difference between the rooms. Seeing her husband as a mommy's boy, Rachel can only be speechless. At that moment, the hostess of the family she came on the same boat with was passing by her. Nicole was a very successful career woman. Rachel had even written about her. So she got up the courage to come and talk to Nicole and asked her how she balanced her family and her career. Rachel said she was married to a rich man, but after the marriage, she realized that there was a huge imbalance between her and her husband. She was afraid that she would lose her mediocre job and even herself in the end. May I ask, did you sign a prenup? Yes. But it's, you know, generous. But, but if your marriage ends, you're not set for life. After learning about Rachel's situation, Nicole told her that not all marriages can be happy in the end. Your power is your independence. Don't give up your power. Okay. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. At dinner, Rachel solemnly tells her husband that she will not give up her mediocre job and asks Shane to respect her choice. Apparently, Shane didn't approve of his wife working on her honeymoon. How about this? Whatever they're paying you, I'll double it. You can get paid to have fun in your honeymoon. With me. In the end, Rachel turned down the magazine's offer because she was on her honeymoon. But she didn't know that when she compromised the first time, there would be countless others. The woman's wire suddenly broke at work, but she couldn't let anyone know because it was her first day at the hotel and the manager didn't know she was pregnant. All day long, she had to endure the pain of welcoming customers. In order not to lose her job, she could only stagger to the restroom. When the manager stepped out of the desk and stepped on the amniotic fluid on the floor, he thought it was someone's vomit and immediately called the cleaning service. As night fell and the manager was busy serving dinner to the guests, the housekeeper came to tell him that the new waitress was giving birth in his office. Why didn't you tell me you were pregnant? I'm sorry. Okay. I needed work. Okay. The waitress is forced to give birth in the break room. Outside, wealthy travelers are enjoying their lavish dinners in the beautiful night sky, talking about love and peace. It's a dramatic yet normal scene at the White Lotus Resort. Tanya, a wealthy woman, arrives at the resort on a healing journey and brings her mother's urn with her. The main purpose of her trip is to scatter her mother's ashes in the ocean, which she loves, and to heal her own broken heart. So Tanya went to the massage room first. Since all the masters were fully booked today and Tanya's needs were urgent, she was treated by Belinda, the spa manager. Unlike a regular massage, Belinda first talked to Tanya face to face so that she could let go of her guard and pour out her emotions. Belinda then laid Tanya down and gave her a head massage. Tanya's eyes became wet with tears as the mystical Hindi scriptures brought a moment of relaxation and peace to her mind. Tanya was very impressed with Belinda's unique experience. She thanked Belinda for her service and gave her a generous tip. From that day on, Tanya asked Belinda to serve her only and even invited her to have dinner with her. But according to the hotel's rules, staff are not allowed to interact with guests on this level. But as Tanya insisted, Belinda couldn't resist, so she agreed to go. At dinner, Tanya asked Belinda if she wanted to start her own business. I would be down for funding something like that. With such an enthusiastic guest, Belinda was clearly interested in her proposal, but she didn't realize that to a rich man, it was probably just a casual conversation. The next morning Tanya, recuperated, decided to take the plunge. She asked the hotel manager to book a yacht for her to go out in the evening to scatter the ashes. And Belinda even gave up her job to accompany her to make her happy. On the other hand, Shane approached the manager early in the morning and asked him to compensate him for the wrong room. He wanted the manager to provide a romantic date for him and his new wife. The manager lost his patience with Shane. He decided to trick Shane and suggested that. A candlelit dinner on our child about at sunset. That sounds perfect. 